Hello everyone, this is Nigeria Today. We'll begin in Kaduna, where the state government has now imposed a 24-hour curfew on Kaura and Jema local government areas. This comes hours after terrorists attacked Kaguro chiefdom in Kaura local government, killing at least 13 villagers while several properties were destroyed. Samuel Aruan, Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, announced this in a statement earlier today. The commissioner said the measure became necessary following advice from security agencies, which is aimed at assisting them to stabilize the situation in the areas, save lives and property, and enable the restoration of law and order. He also called on residents in the affected communities to cooperate with the security agencies in a bid to restore peace and uphold law and order in the areas. In Borno State, more involvement of civil society organizations in the private sector and government decision-making is one way of bringing strong development and durable solutions to the challenges facing the country. That was among views shared by stakeholders during a one-day consultative meeting organized by the Northeast Development Commission on arriving at a sustainable stabilization development plan for the region. Jesse Tafida reports. The North East Development Commission is the body responsible bringing to life a region that has suffered 12 year insurgency. The commission has endeavored to restore livelihoods of victims of the insurgency and it is now making efforts to sustain its intervention. Today, the NEDC is meeting with key stakeholders to draw a development plan on stabilizing the northeast region. The essence of having these diverse stakeholders under one roof here, therefore, is harness the individual and collective input to enrich the process and align the NADC's policy of inclusiveness and bottom up approach. The minister is proud, as a supervising minister, to see that NADC has hit the ground running even before the finalization of uh, this plan. One of the topmost uh, catalysts for boosters of security is getting employment for the youth. So the, the master plan is going to focus on uh, employment. Stakeholders at this meeting see the gathering as a step in the right direction towards bringing to life social and basic amenities to victims of insurgency. I would like to urge the commission to also look into the possibility of complementing government efforts in developing and implementing viable and workable strategies on how best to address the current challenges. I want to use this opportunity to call on the NDRC to continue opening its doors for a robust communication channel with the community in terms of providing the necessary security which we will continue to give. This interactive session between the NEDC and government, religious and traditional leaders, CSOs and security agencies is key towards ensuring the beginning of a fruitful journey and success to sustainable development in the region. This consultative meeting between the North East Development Commission, Borno State Government and other key stakeholders is to draw out plans on our best to bring about durable solutions to a region that has suffered 12 years of over insurgency. Jesse Tafida, TVC News, Maituguri. In other news, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission says it has granted administrative bail to the immediate past governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano. That's according to EFCC Chairman Abdul Rashid Bawa. Mr. Bawa said the former governor was cooperating with the commission to perfect the bail conditions, but revealed Mr. Obiano is still in EFCC custody. According to him, there was nothing political about the former governor's arrest. Mr. Obiano was arrested on Thursday at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, while trying to board a flight to Texas, United States. The EFCC had in November last year placed the former governor on a watch list. He was arrested for misappropriating 5 billion naira shopee and the 37 billion naira security vote funds, which was withdrawn in cash. Part of the funds was also allegedly diverted to finance political activities in the state. 
Meanwhile, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja struck out a motion on notice filed by Ebony State Governor David Umayi seeking the stay of execution of a judgment removing him from office. Justice Inyang Ekwo struck out the motion earlier today following the withdrawal of the case by the plaintiffs in the suit. A senior advocate of Nigeria, Chukuma Ume, who represented Governor Umayi and his deputy, Kalechi Igwe, informed the court of the new development. The decision by both men, according to the lawyer, is hinged on the fact that they have now approached the Court of Appeal, Abuja Division, to reverse the March 8 decision of the court, which removed them from office, to ensure they are reinstated. In a short ruling, Justice Ayak struck out the motion, with the focus now turned to the appellate court in the quest to reinstate the sacked governor and his deputy. Also, the Federal High Court in Abuja has nullified the candidacy of 20 members of the Cross River State House of Assembly that defected from the People's Democratic Party to the ruling All Progressives Congress. The presiding judge, Justice Taiwo Taiwo, in a statement, a judgment rather, held that the lawmakers, having abandoned the political party that sponsored them to power, ought to vacate their seats. In opposing the suit, Michael Zekome, counsel to the fourth to 25th defendants, had challenged the court's jurisdiction to hear the suit. He submitted that the course of action arose in Calabar and that the matter should be transferred to the High Court in Calabar. Dr. Stiwo held that there is nothing against the law that the suit be heard by the court. The People's Democratic Party had instituted a suit against the lawmakers over the defection to the APC. And now let's turn to Delta State where the oil spill that occurred on the wellhead in OML 150 affecting nine communities in Sapele and Okwe council areas has been linked to equipment failure. The people in that community are calling on government to prevail on the oil company to elevate their losses. This call is coming more than a month after the incident. Ikena Amechi reports. Waiting here for the arrival of the representatives of the regulatory agencies and the oil company are members of the communities in Ogbe and Sapley local government areas affected by the crude oil spill. After more than five hours, the team arrived. The joint investigation team had a brief meeting with members of the affected communities over what might have caused the spill though the team declined to speak to journalists on the outcome of the investigation the affected communities are quick to reveal the finding of the team uh, from the investigation so far uh, it is very very obvious that the cause of this spillage is as a result of uh, equipment failures equipment failure on the part of the Koyere warehead. So that is the cause of the oil spillage. Meanwhile, the people of the affected communities are still appealing for aids from relevant agencies as the spill has damaged their source of livelihood. Since last month, February 2022, we have there's no water from that, that community, and the water is the source of our livelihood. That's what we drank. Up to now, there's no water, no relief material, nothing whatsoever. So I want to please beg the federal government to come to our aid of rescue that should bring relief material to clean the rivers and do the needful in paying compensation. Trification created in the waterways. You can see it that all of these vegetations are stained with crude oil and the impact of it is that there will be dieback of all this vegetation and then water has been polluted implying that the people may need to now go and source for alternative water. This is where they use for their uh, drinking. This is what they use for their domestic activities. So we are calling on the government to intervene to so that they will they should come and attend to the issue. Now that the investigation visit is done, next is to know the commensurate actions to compensate the communities and save the environment from further degradation. Iken Amechi, TVC News, Saple, Delta State. Today's World Down Syndrome Day, a day set aside to promote public awareness. In Lagos, stakeholders from a foundation are calling for more opportunities to be given to persons with Down Syndrome. Nyolu Apopola reports. Parenting has never been a walk in the park. With its ups and downs varying from families, some might be more challenging than the other, 
especially for children with Down syndrome. Many parents typically experience shock, sadness and fear over the uncertainty of raising a child with intellectual and developmental disabilities. For Favor and Solomon, their resilience to becoming someone great is bigger than their disabilities. myself about my work, my job, and make up at it and take it. See me, i very happy today. I want to be the picture about the bossing. Power change to go on both a radar card. While this awareness has been on since 2011, like, like this group of people have made it their mantra to advocate for inclusion. Talk to them the way you will talk to your child. Talk to them the way you will talk to your grown adult child also. The world is large. They make up the society also. Putting them aside or discriminating them, they are not part of the society, is not the best. So self-advocacy has gone a long way in ensuring you know, persons with a Down syndrome are seen and people are aware of their skills and their potentials and what they can do. Also, at the foundation, Down Syndrome Foundation Nigeria, we have started something, we started employing them ourselves. So by the time we employ them, we put them on our payroll and others, they see that these people are actually employable. The group say government also has a role to play in making life better for the children living with Down syndrome. We believe that ability is in disability. So everybody that is living with disability is carried along in all our affairs, both in employment, in generating income. While some experts say there is no cure for this ailment, these children have chosen to be happy, despite all the odds, to become the best they want to be. Well, if give you opportunity. In New Lua, Ukola, TVC News, Lagos. You're watching Nigeria today. Let's talk politics. From the 24th of this month, continuous voters registration exercise will now be held in 332 electoral wards that make up Oshun State, as directed by the national headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission. The state resident electoral commissioner, Professor Abdugani Uraji, was speaking in Oshogo at the Election Stakeholders Forum on devolution of CVR. Rafiu Hamid was there. In 2018, the total number of registered voters in Oshun was 1.68 million. Additional 278,835 eligible voters are said to have registered in the ongoing voters registration exercise. The state governorship election is about 115 days away from now, and INEC has now devolved the continuous voters registration exercise to what level. Since we started this registration, only one third of those who started the registration have actually completed their registration since we started. Every week it has just been one third. Papers were presented on steps involved in the new registration and the need for people to avoid double registration. The state resident electoral commissioner, Professor Abdugani Raji, says 753 voting points have also been converted to polling units. I'm urging and appealing to this gathering to assist the Commission by sensitizing and mobilizing the members of the public to take this advantage to either register or transfer their voting rights to new polling units, I mean to the polling units, especially the newly created polling units which are closer to their residences. Stakeholders appreciate INEC for organizing the event. A very good occasion for people to interact. Especially on, um, uh, on the forthcoming election in Ocean State. Not only that one. Anybody who listens to the REC here, REC has done a very good uh, preparation for the coming election in Ocean State here. I think it's a necessary program to inform people, to educate people about uh, general affairs of election in Nigeria. Most especially as we prepare for the gubernatorial election in the state of Oshun. The continuous voters registration exercise at the world level will now hold between the 24th and 38th of March from 9 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. 
INEC says the CVR will thereafter be suspended until after the 2023 general election. The commission warns people of voting age to take advantage of the opportunity so as not to be disenfranchised during July 16 governorship election in the state. Rafiul Hamid, TVC News, Ushubu. In other news, the new executive secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund says the body will now focus on curriculum delivery in Nigerian tertiary institutions. Sonia Chono disclosed this while taking over from his predecessor, Professor Elias Bogoro. He believes the right curriculum will help create a symbiotic relationship between industries and academia for seamless production of manpower. Helen Osamide Aiken reports. Higher education in Nigeria is expected to satisfy the requirements of industry, commerce and society. These aspirations were met in the early years of the institutions, but not today. In recent years, the quality of graduates shunned out can hardly meet the expectations of local employers of labor and the organizations that should commercialize research findings. <laughs> Sonia Echona takes over the mantle of leadership of TED Fund under these circumstances and promises that reviewing Nigerian's higher education curriculum to meet current realities will be one of his areas of focus. We've done so well in physical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I will continue to do so. But we also must focus on those who have been trusted with the preparation of our students for future challenges of this course. We must focus on the type of curriculum that is being taught and the delivery systems for it. As Professor Bogoro bows out of office, he challenges his successor to uphold the legacy of the fund. There was only seed money of four billion over a period of eight years for research, particularly the NRF. Now that changed when I made a case that we scale it up. And from that year, it became annual rather than seed money for many years. And in the year 2019, 5 billion naira, instead of 500 million, uh, over a period of eight years, if you turn out the arithmetic, it now became 5 billion for the year 2019. National Education Trust Fund is one of government agencies whose impact has really been felt in tertiary institutions nationwide. Before now, architect Sonia Echeno was a retired permanent secretary at the Federal Ministry of Education. Helino Samede Ekins, TVC News, Abuja. The federal government says more than 240,000 women in over 11,000 affinity groups across the nation will benefit from the Individual Livelihood Grant under the Nigeria for Women project. Minister for Women Affairs, Paul and Tallinn reviewed these during the flag off of the first batch of grant disbursement to more than 3,000 women participated in the program in Kebi State. The minister was represented at the event by Director of Special Duties at the Ministry, who says the project is a World Bank assisted program aimed at empowering women and improving their access to finance through livelihood grant. While flagging off the disbursement, Governor Kebi State Atiku Bagudu called on the women to utilize the grant, uh, the grant rather, to improve their businesses. Women of Kebi in the three local government have organized themselves into groups. Women of Kebi State have commendably saved over 400 million in the three local governments. Women of Kebi State have complied with all the protocols and all the steps that need to be taken to qualify for grant. Free, empowered, and the connected women to enhance livelihood opportunities through women affinity groups and access to bigger markets. We are so, the, the project is targeting 54,000 women in KB as a whole. As I speak now, we have over 50,000 women on ground. So uh, by the time they are due for that, these women will subsequently receive. Away from that, the United States Mission to Nigeria says it's committed to building cross-cultural understanding between both countries through music. 
The Deputy Public Affairs Officer of the U.S. Consulate, Jennifer Ford, made this note while speaking with newsmen at the musical performance held in Ibadu. Olaido Yowale reports. The event kicked off with a solo performance of the Nigerian National Anthem by the Ambassador of the United States to Nigeria, Mary Leonard. It was then followed by the National Anthem of the United States by an American classic pianist, Pauline Young. It was a night full of several applauds as the American pianist threw out several classical rhythms intrigued the audience. to showcase their culture abroad and and so I really hope that more people in different parts of the world including in Nigeria will express more interest and curiosity in learning more about classical music the deputy public affairs officer of the United States believes this would further boost the cultural understanding between both countries so we really believe that art is important and it's important to share it it's important for cross-cultural understanding and so bringing an American classical pianist here allows her to engage with Nigerians, with musicians, and talk about her life and her experience. She's inspiring and motivating the young musicians she's uh, meeting to pursue careers in music as well. The event concluded with a presentation of talking drums to Ambassador Mary Beth and the pianist as a symbol of Nigerian cultural heritage. Olaide Yuwale, TVC News, Ibadan. Well, that's Nigeria today.